let's go ahead and uh, move into today's topics. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and break down a couple random stories. Let's first start off with Omarosa. So I haven't really talked too much about it. I guess I've posted a little bit about her. If you're not familiar, Omarosa, who is... Hmm, she is a very interesting character. So I remember her first appearing on The Apprentice. I watched the first season. I was like in middle school, right? I remember that shit. And she was hilarious, but she was like the like the villain, you know? Like she was the villain of that season. And and that was always how she was sort of portrayed in the media afterwards, you know? Like she'd get little gigs uh, on on TV, or she'd work on some side project with um, Donald Trump, and and there was there was always that like part of her character. Even though I know that in real life she probably wasn't like she's not like that, but that was always just her character, right? So you know when she first got that job in the White House as the um, it's like the chief of communications for like the African American something. Um, I I was kind of skeptical. I was like, um, hmm, I don't know. Like, like you you worked with him on like reality TV stuff, and I just I don't know. But I was I was open. And so now, um, Omarosa, uh, uh, she, she got fired, and now she came out with, like, this huge, you know, uh, big leak that she uh, has all this, like, damning information on the White House. <gasps> and she has a tape of Donald Trump saying the N-word. Now... Everybody is like, you know, fucking just wait. They're waiting. Amrosa is like, she she knows that she's teasing America. She knows it. She's so smart. She's so smart. <laughs> she is so smart. And um, so it's it, it's funny because like. I always had a feeling that the Trump administration was going to fail. I just, I just know that Trump's just not a smart guy. And if, if you're running a business and you're not a smart guy, then your business is just going to naturally fail. And for Trump, that is the case. Like he's had a lot of businesses that have failed, but he just either he refuses to 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 pay off the debts that he has, or he makes some money by like skimming off the top from people who who work under him. Um, so he's just a horrible, corrupt person. So I just knew that the administration was was going to be equally corrupt. And um, but yeah, I was like, all right. So when Amarosa joins this thing, like, I know that she's smart. I I know that she her her villain personality. Like, yeah, you know that's her shtick and. I think that she's smart enough to know that hey, if if the market, if the if entertainment wants to bill me as that character, you know, and I get to go and like, I don't know if anybody remembers, um, Amorosa was in a a dating series, a dating a reality dating show that Trump funded. Uh, it was called like the Ultimate Merger. And my wife watched it. Um, I, I think Amrosa was like the first season or whatever. And then someone was like the second season. But I, um, yeah, I remember like she, she, she was on that thing, right? And, and, and that was her shtick, you know? She was just like the, the, the very the cold, uh, 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 villainous, you know, type. Just like the, the, the ice queen kind of personality, right? And so I knew that her going to the White House was, okay, this is different. You know, she, like now she can't really do that shtick. So what, like, what's going to happen? And so 
I think what you're seeing now is like the real Amorosa. Like I think that she, even to to other uh, to other people who who hate Trump, like I think I think she was a lot smarter than we gave her credit for, and even all this like the the whack shit she said and all the problematic stuff she said, I I'm starting to contemplate that maybe she really did it because she knew that like, whoa, look, 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 look. I came from starting off season one of Apprentice, which is like 2000. And I've been here like constantly in the pocket of Trump all the way to the White House. So think about it, all right? If you want to talk about the the meteoric rise of Donald Trump, then you also have to talk about the meteoric rise of Omarosa because she's been around since season one. Okay? So if she's been around since season one, that means that she knew that like, okay, this this is it. Like this is the this is the final the final countdown. And and like I said, I think that she she came into the White House knowing that she was looking for for some shit. And I'm not seeing, saying that in a bad thing. Like, I think that she knew that this is a really bad businessman. And this is going to be a bad leader for our country. And if I'm going to join this thing, let me just play, let, let me just, you know, uh, uh, fake it till I make it. And I'll play along with their little racist lingo and I'll, and I'll, and I'll join this little boys club and I'll pretend that I'm okay with the stuff because I want to get more clearance. I want to be able to go to these more, to, to more of these events and, and sit in into these movies or into these meetings and, and hear what's, what's going on, you know? And when you think about it, like compared to all the other people who have been fired or who left previously, Amorosa has been here for a while, you know? And again, her background with Trump, her relationship with Trump started off as a contestant on The Apprentice. And it was kind of like you could tell that she's just super aware. Like when you watch that interview, and I know a lot of people have mentioned this. When you watch that interview of her, I think it was like on it was like NBC or whatever. She's wearing a yellow dress. And this lady, this like, you know, white lady started firing off questions. I'm Rosa, I'm Rosa, blah, 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 blah. Throwing out like a million questions at a time. And Amorosa was like, it was funny because, you know, she, bef- before, you know, it's like if Amorosa were in that situation, like if someone was bombarding her with questions, like she would be like, oh, like try to answer them and, and whatnot. But like, since she, she transitioned from, oh, I'm not someone I'm not just someone who is just like working in Hollywood and doing these Hollywood projects or whatever. Like, no, I work for the White House now, so you're going to you're going to talk to me and you're going to respect me like I'm someone who works at the White House. And so she commanded that interview and she was just like 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 a ruler, like a ruler just like every single time that that interviewer started darting off questions, she was just like and it was it was glorious. Um, but I think that, you know, I was reading some comments and certain people were like, oh, you know why she's like kind of being rude or blah, blah, blah. I don't think that at all. You know, I think, I think the reality is Omarosa knows that given the situation that she's in, where she has all these tapes, all this footage to like, just totally, well, potentially like you know, bring down the White House, potentially, she knows that people are going to be exploiting her time, trying to uh, uh, milk her for all these interviews, and she wants to make her money, you know, she wants to make her money, she wants to be able to, like, do this at a pace that she wants to, you know, she came out with a book, she's holding off on this N-word tape, she says she has videos, like, dude, it's almost like she took the Trump playbook, and now she's reversing it on him, where she has all this stuff and <laughs> she's all 
she's already having, she already has a content schedule, all right? She already has a plan of like, oh, season one, <laughs> we're going to be leaking audio tapes once a week. <laughs> Join us in if you want to s- sponsor this podcast. You know, it's like, she, oh God, I'm telling you, dude. And, and think about it. Like this goes all the way back to when she first started that White House job because she told us that she has recordings and receipts and documents of everything like talking about how she has like a log of like you know like i guess meetings and and things that have been said and so like i'm telling you man i who 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 knows where this where this is going to go because we have no idea how much dirt and on how many people you know so like I said, I I put my hat, I I I tip my hat to Amorosa, one hundred percent, because as much as we want to like talk about her problematic stuff, I get it, I get it, right? Totally. But let's be real. What's happening right now is phenomenal, and it is absolutely critical that all of this happens, and we we just let her have her momentum, because I would hate it if one of these SJWs just starts like investigating like oh well you know here let me go make some content let me go find an old tweet of Omarosa and like make a think piece and try to drag her like no 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 listen she is trying to drag the White House we can talk about all the problematic stuff that she's done or that she may continue to do or whatever but right now give her her space let her shine let her do it you know, I, I, I insert Kelly Clarkson a moment like this. She's been waiting. She's been waiting. She's been waiting. Alright. <laughs> Moving on. Um, our second story of the day is about Asia Argento. Now, Asia Argento, uh, she was the um, former wife of Anthony Bourdain, the late Anthony Bourdain. Um, I forgot what she did. Did, it was she, I think she was like an actress. Actress, yeah, yeah, she's an actress. And she was one of the first people to uh, uh, publicly accuse Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault. And she really sort of became the face, the new face, I should say, since Me Too uh, was started by black women. And a lot of people have have mentioned that like Asia Argento and, and Rose McGowan have sort of like basically columbus that movement. Asia Argento, who had been spearheading and, and really like pushing for, for, uh, uh, for the Me Too movement, has been accused herself of sexual harassment. And it was against a... A white dude, like a white kid, um, and I guess the, the the accusations are that he was underage when she did it. Now, um, whew, God, you know, it's it's so now you have like okay, so so it's like you have the Harvey Weinstein thing, right? And then you have Asia Argento, who's the main person who sort of kind of publicly going after him, right? And talking about this issue, right? So this main central figure. And keep in mind that just given the climate, a lot of misogynists and incels and whatever, like they're 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 also closely monitoring this because they want her to fail. They want her to be discredited so they can um uh you know talk about how you know, uh, Harvey Weinstein's innocent or whatever, blah, 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 like whatever bullshit reason they have, right? And so now this, this dude who's 22 right now, he's 22. I forgot his name. On, I, honestly, like, damn, see, that's why, that's why I like certain, like, <laughs> that's why certain like white actors, like, dude, I just don't recognize them. They're, they're all variations of Chris Pratt. <laughs> no, but um so the guy 
so that yeah, um, Asia Argento um, assaulted him or sexually assaulted him. Asia denied it, and now word on the street is that she said that. Uh, so so, in response to the accusation, uh, people were saying that like, oh, she paid off that that kid so he could stop talking to the press. Uh, but what Asia Argento did was she said, Anthony Bourdain did it. Mm. Okay, all right. Plot thickens, right? So, so now we have this really, really convoluted story where it's like, you know, you're trying to take down Harvey Weinstein. Asia Argenta is leading the charge. She's got a big old giant spear and it's like, you know, it's already through the abdomen of Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein has been slayed pretty much, kind of. Uh, and now she's on a tear. She's looking to, you know, uh, 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 make this movement bigger. But you have this guy come in the picture, all right? And then now you have Anthony Bourdain come into the picture. And, and now you're also faced with, this, with this, the next discussion of, oh my God, everyone was just mourning Anthony Bourdain and how amazing and how beautiful he was as a person and how much impact he was and people were crying and blah, blah, blah. People were really sad. What happens now? How, like, I can only imagine the think pieces. Look, we don't even know what's going on. And Anthony Bourdain's dead, so it's not as if he can clarify it for himself. And I'm not going to say that, like, oh, Asia Argento is, like, lying on Anthony Bourdain or anything like that. But I'm just saying that we don't know. Because Anthony Bourdain can't speak for himself. So now you're just like... Woo. Okay. Um, and I think... The, the tricky thing is, you know, part of the Me Too movement, an integral part of the Me Too movement, at least like sort of the, the thinking and the philosophy behind it, is that you, you know, people should believe victims and that it's hard to, to prove things like sexual assault because it's not like you document it. It's not like when you're having sex with people you know, that, oh, hey, uh, can you log into the My Sex app and please sign here? Like, it doesn't happen. Like, you know, and so there's no way to prove that these things happen. And so for a lot of women who are abused, it becomes like an impossible game, like, of basically he said, she said, and, you know, um, like, most of the time, women lose these cases. Like, it never, it never comes to fruition. Um, and, and so the Me Too movement is, is trying to create more equity in the situation. Because most of the time, it's always just like, oh, well, you know, oh, the woman, like, she's crazy. And, like, she's just, like, emotional. She's just trying to get money, blah, blah, blah. So, like, there is, there's always been that narrative of the gold-digging woman or the woman who is just, like, she's, she's so hungry to just, uh, uh, you know, ruin someone's life or whatever. And so, um, and that is just, that that is... That has always, 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 always been around. So the Me Too movement is important, right? It's very, very important. Now, it's ignited more confidence and trust in believing victims, which is, uh, which is fantastic. And it's also expanded uh, to include men and uh, uh, people who are queer. But also one of the things that's tricky about it, and it's, it's, it's a reality, um, there are a lot of vindictive men, like incels and just alt-right dudes, or just like guys in general. And I don't know if people notice this, but like if you, 
if you follow any, you know, like quote manly man um, topics on Instagram or whatever, like I follow bodybuilding, I follow MMA. I mean, that's about it. And a lot of these, you know, pages and platforms will post like sometimes like videos of like, oh, gold digging prank or, or, or whatever, you know? And it's always interesting for me because like I, I like it when they post that stuff, not because I like that content, but because I can get a glimpse of like, ooh, let's go ahead and see what kind of views are in this community. And all the time, I always see comments of like guys talking about how they feel about the Me Too movement and how guys feel about uh, the shift in in equity and how you know we're we as a society are slowly starting to improve in terms of our ability to say you know what like we need to trust women and and if women are saying um how they feel about these certain experiences or that they've had these experiences then we need to trust them um and a lot of men are talking about how they want to like actually plan out ways to use that whole, oh, let's go believe the victim mentality, how they want to use that and lie on women. Like there are a lot of men who I've seen comments say like, oh, hey, um, you know, I want you to like go out in public and like find a way to like, you know, get some girl to like touch you and then just call the cops or whatever, or like start like making all these false reports about rape and harassment because what they want to do is they want, they want to destabilize that movement by discrediting it, by, by, by throwing in so many false accusations, then they start to make people question the accusations that women have. And it's a really, like, it's a really fucked up, mentality and it's a really fucked up strategy because like one on one hand it's like you know this is going to ruin a lot of people's lives and this is going to um this is like it's only going to get more petty it's only going to get more vindictive and people are only going to just continue to to try to like outdo the other person you know like like feminists and and people who are who are fighting on the side of Me Too are gonna have to figure out a way to respond to all these like weird things. And not just not to say that this Asia Argento case is false. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is that like I know that a lot of guys are watching this Asia Argento story and they are loving the fact that now she is getting dragged. Um, like I said, I if you're if your Instagram feed doesn't have a lot of like gendered content, I'm not saying that like, you know, oh, you need to like be interested, but I think it's worth checking out. You know, I think if you're, if you're used to having content that is more um, gender neutral or more feminine and it attracts more, you know, uh, uh, people who aren't toxic males, you, you don't get to see what these guys are saying, you know? And I highly suggest that you do. I highly suggest all people look. The number one, the worst thing that you can do as someone on Woke Book, the worst thing that you can do is refuse to read what the opposite side is talking about. Like there are so many SJWs who are like, oh, I don't want to read that. That's like triggering and stuff like that and blah, blah, blah. Or like, oh, I, I, I could never read Fox News. Or like, oh, like, why did you even share that? For me, I do it because, you know, you, it's sort of the, you know, keep your eye on it. Uh, you know, just like be, be mindful of your enemy. Be mindful of what tactics they're using. Be mindful of the language that they're using. I think one of the reasons why I, I've succeeded so much, you know, uh, on this page and, and why I, I have you know, uh, a relatively decent touch on at least sort of the topics that are going around is because I also try to keep in mind what the other side is doing and how toxic, toxic they are. Um, but yeah, you just got to keep sharp, you know, don't, don't get into that bubble of 
like, oh, um, you know, not only do I need a safe space, but I need to just, I need to not um, even think about what the other people are saying. Like, I see a lot, I see this with a lot, okay, look, I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this. I see this with a lot of, um, of the new, sort of newbie um, women of color feminists, where a lot of them are like, are so, they're so like, oh, um, you know, I don't want to care, I don't care what any man has to say, and blah, 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 and I totally get it. Look, I have nothing, nothing bad to say that about that at all. But a, a lot of them have this mentality of like, oh, look, I, I, I never want to read anything that a man has to say about like justice or civil rights, blah, 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 blah. And look, that's totally fine. But I just, I just think that if you're looking to engage in a space where you're talking about social issues, then it's, it's important that you know what the rest of society is thinking about and their responses, and how they're actually going to handle certain topics. And that's one of the things that has always been sort of difficult, even for me sometimes, you know, like how to contextualize certain issues. Like certain issues might be important to you in the community, but outside of the community, how much does it matter? Outside of the community, how are they reacting, you know? So um, just... Keep it, keep a sharp eye. Like, I actually don't mind sometimes keeping on Fox News and like keeping it on the background because I see it like I'm mentally sparring. Sometimes I'll just like be writing or I'll just like, you know, be playing video games or whatever. Um, and Fox News will be in the background. And the reason why I keep it that way is because I want to be able to hear things. And if I hear something and, and, and someone says something that's offhand or whatever, in my mind, I trigger a response and I'm like, oh, hey, wait, that's wrong. That's inaccurate. And so it's almost like you're, you're uh, having these mental sparring sessions. So that way, when you do engage in these discussions and in these arguments um, in the comment section or whatever, then you can be just as sharp and you can go ahead and respond. Um, but that's like... I don't necessarily recommend that. <laughs> um, moving on. For our third story, we're going to talk about Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver. The man who... Oh God, what, do you, what does Jamie Oliver look like? He's like... He's a very... Um, oh gosh... He looks very uh, uh, Lord of the Ringsy, right? He's like a, he's got some of the Ed Sheeran going on. He looks just like Ed Sheeran. He's practically Ed Sheeran. So Jamie Ed Sheeran Oliver, um, he is getting his shit kicked in because Jamie Oliver created a new dish called jerk rice. Yep, 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 yep. He created something called jerk rice. Now, I've had jerk chicken. I've had, what was it, jerk pork? I think. Um, I think I've had, um, yeah, I think that's about it. I know there's like jerk seasoning. We bought that plenty of times. But I've never heard of jerk rice. What the hell? His jerk rice. Apparently, yeah, it ain't a thing. Um, he, quote, invented, created this jerk rice thing. And he was called out on Twitter by Don Butler, who is a... Who, I need to take a, a, a big breath from this. Uh, she is a member of parliament. She's an MP for the Brent Central and Shadow Secretary of State for Women and Equalities. Woo! It's a name title so long, you have to yawn in the middle of it. Don Butler called him out and was basically like, um, Jamie, that's not a thing. Uh, Chirk Rice, that's not part of culture. Like, you're just appropriating shit now. What are you doing? It gets... It gets worse. Now, when he... We're talking jerk rice. When, when Jamie Oliver created this jerk rice thing, 
I was like thinking, okay, so maybe there's just like certain brown spices and, you know, there's just like, uh, uh, there's a little heat and, um, I don't know, there's cumin. What, 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 what kind of cool shit are you putting in there, Jamie? You must be, it must be good. You're a chef on TV. No. Mm-mm. Jamie Oliver's jerk rice has garlic, ginger, <laughs> and the th and the third the third ingredient is jalapenos. He put that shit. Um my only question is where are the spices? Like, I understand that there's garlic and ginger and jalapenos, but there's literally, like, like, okay, I, again, I am not a expert on this, but as far as I know, jerk chicken is primarily, like, what makes it jerk chicken is the spice. Like, like, what what universe is Jamie Oliver living in? Is he is he going to make, uh, um, you know. Is he going to make fucking, uh, dumplings? But instead of wrapping paper, he's going to use like hamburger buns. You know, it's like, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Ginger, garlic, and jalapenos. And he. <laughs> Oh my god, look. Look, look, look. You know what he said? <laughs> he said he used garlic, ginger, and jalapenos to, quote, to create a jerk marinade <laughs> with attitude. <laughs> oh, wow. Jamie Oliver. You were so fucking, you were so fucking Caribbean, bro. You're so fucking... <laughs> Jamie Oliver. Gosh. Who, who knew that Jamie Oliver knew the secret recipe to jerk rice? You know, it was the ancient recipe, the super ancient recipe when, you know, uh, uh, the people in the, the, the islands were pale and they looked like Jamie Oliver. You know... You know that, you know that recipe, that authentic recipe. You know that one. <laughs> Whew, Jamie Oliver. Okay, moving, moving on. Let's go and predict three things. We're going to predict my top three uh, uh, guesses for what's going to happen to Woke Book. Look, if you're on this podcast right now, you were part of this podcast. If you were part of the Woke Food Podcast community, then you're part of Woke Book. Welcome to Woke Book. Now, if you've uh, uh, been here long enough, then you'll probably get a lot of these, you know, what I'm talking about. But I'm basically talking about what I think is going to happen to the activist community on Facebook in terms of... Uh, different pages, in terms of uh, different creators, people joining the scene, uh, toxicity, any of that shit, all right? So here are my three predictions, all right? Now my first prediction, this is a big one. Like this is, and I, and I, and I came up with this a while ago and I was talking about it a little bit. I was sort of flirting with the idea. But now I really, I, I, I really think this is going to happen. And I think that when it happens, woke book will never be the same. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. And, and I'm glad that I won't be a part of it. But I will say that whoever, whoever does this will fucking explode on the book. Guaranteed. And this is such an easy idea that I don't know why no one has done it yet. But 
what I think is going to happen on a woke book is someone is going to make a page specifically to talk drama within the activist community. There is going to be a person who is going to make a platform that is sort of a TMZ style um, platform. Because there's already a lot of weird drama going on between different activists, between their different followers and their communities, and now they have groups. And, you know, the, the woke book universe spans. There's trans communities, there's pro-black communities, there's black feminist communities. So there's all sorts of different little sections. But there isn't a centralized resource where everyone can get their news about what's going on. And I think that's, that's, that's a, that is a much needed service. I think that if someone makes this, they can do a very good job. If someone with a lot of dignity, with a lot of integrity, um, and a whole lot of determination, if they could do it, they would make a killing. Just talking about what's going on with these activists, um, and talking about like these, and sort of synthesizing what's going on with a lot of these communities. Now, I'll say that one of the reasons why certain activists are bigger and more popular than others is because they did intersectionality well and they were smart about it. You know, they, they, they talked about issues because they genuinely cared about them and they were genuinely interested in them. And, you know, pages like Sean King's or pages like Cat Black or Son of Baldwin um, they do really well because they very smoothly navigate those, those different communities, right? Um, but, you know, they all have their specialty. Cat Black talks about certain things. Son of Baldwin talks about certain things. Sean King talks about certain things. I talk about certain things. Even though we have a diverse amount of content, we can't really talk about everything, but if there is a centralized place where everyone can see a, from a bird's eye view about what's going on, that, that will blow up. Um, whoever does that, if they could monetize it, they would make a shitload of money. Um, so yeah, that's your free idea. If anybody wants to do it, hey, go ahead, take it. Um... However, I also have a second prediction to follow up with that, which is I think that, that, it, that it's a great idea that if put in the wrong hands, uh, will go south so fast. Like, lawsuits and shit. You know, like, I, I'm telling you, man, these sloppy activists, like, you know, a lot of these act, you know, it's so funny, like, certain activists will throw on, oh, like, you know, oh, stop doing this, I'm going to sue you, blah, blah, blah. Like, a lot of activists have no idea what they're talking about. Because um, most, for, for the most part, and I'm sorry to say this, but small-time activists, you're, you're not going to have a case. That's reality. Um, the ones who will have a case are people with big platforms. Because people with big platforms have numbers and things are measured. And so if someone, say for example, try to drag a certain activist who had a platform and they had numbers and they said, oh, okay, uh, on, on this day, on Friday, I had um, a thousand, or I had, on Friday I had 100,000 subscribers or 100,000 followers. But after I got dragged, uh, I only have 50,000 subscribers or 50,000 followers. Therefore, that drag that happened to me, which proved to be false, costed me this many followers. Therefore, and if, and if the page is monetized, and if the page um, is responsible for making money, dude, like, I'm telling you, this, this idea of a woke book TMZ thing, it is, it's, it is playing with fire. If someone does it, if someone does it who's ethical, 
And if you have a very diverse team, a very eclectic team from all communities, they can do it, dude. You can get a lot of shit done. Um, so I hope someone takes up that idea. Ho- hopefully someone good. Um, but I think uh, another thing that's going to happen, my second prediction for what I think is going to happen on Woke Book, mm, I think right now Facebook is going through a bunch of algorithmic changes and a lot of profiles are getting banned. A lot of them are getting banned. Banned very easily. They're increasing a lot of their securities, especially everything that's been going on with Cambridge Analytica and Mark Zuckerberg basically getting his ass handed to him multiple times. He's scared. He's shook. He knows Big Brother's watching. Knows he's watching. And so Mark Zuckerberg, uh, he he's trying to make things uh, healthy again, you know? So Facebook is going to tighten rules. A lot more activists, I feel like, are going to get banned. And I, I think we're going to... We're going to eventually enter the, 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 the era of the permaban. A lot of activists have been, you know, we, we all know the gig. We all know about having multiple profiles because, like, you know, you say something like, hey, you know, men are trash. And then, oh, my God, like, your profile is taken away. And then you have to, like, start up another one, you know. And so I know a lot of activists have, like, two to five profiles because they keep getting banned. And they keep getting, like, first you get, like, a... a like a, what is it, like a three hour ban or whatever, or a, or a 24 hour ban. Then it's like three days, then it's a week, then it's like two weeks, then it's a month. And then it, it caps off at a month. And it sucks because you don't have, you can't like photos, you can't, can't do anything, you know? Um, but we've always only had the 30 day ban. We've never had a perma ban. We've never had a permanent ban. And I think that's going to happen. And Facebook, I just read an article that Facebook is starting to give people ratings and grades on their profiles based off of how trustworthy they are, based off of their content, uh, based off of just possibly their engagement. That way they can filter out spam or, you know, I don't even know like how much you lie. I, I really don't know. But they're actually grading you. And, and get this. Guess what the scale is. It ain't A, B, C, D, F. It's not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's 0 and 1. So you either are trustworthy or you're not trustworthy. Now, if you're a content creator, if you're an activist, that's, that is very important news. Unfortunately, I can't really post it on the page because those types of articles, algorithmically speaking, they just don't do well, unfortunately. But it is a very important thing that a lot of people on Wokebook need to know. Like, like you need to, you need to be very careful what you post, especially if you have a platform, if, especially if you're trying to, if you're working in the civil rights and, and, and justice space, be very careful. I know that a lot of activists out there have a have a habit of, you know, using their trigger fingers and, ooh, this topic sounds cool. I want to sound intersectional. Share. Ooh, this one sounds cool. I want to share it. Share. You don't really, like, think about where the source is or whatever. And I know that I fucked up on that several times, too. So I get it. But I'm just saying that I had a page. I have a page. And I have a verified page. And verified pages have protections. You don't. If you don't have a page, your personal profile is subject to being shut down. And I always advise people, never do your work, never do your activist work on a main page. Mm-mm. Always got to do it on, a, on another page. Because if Mark Zuckerberg decides one day to give you a permaban... All of your stuff is gone. Or it might be gone. I don't know. Like like your photos, your posts, your friends, the, you know, happy birthdays that you've received, your DMs, 
all of that, you know, like, and, and for me, it's like, I have a lot of memories on my Facebook and I wouldn't want that to just get deleted. So I'll watch my ass. I have a couple of, uh, uh, multiple profiles I'm telling you there is so I, I, I don't I don't get why so many activists um, why so many activists haven't made more pages like so many of you who are trying to like actually do activist work are operating off of personal pages and I'm just like that is a dangerous game because you have all of your dirty work connected to your family photos and, you know, like, he, don't you realize how catty Wokebook is? Don't you realize that people will add you pretending to, like, be intersectional and do work with you, but they really just want access to your photos and they want access to your posts? I'm telling you, there are a lot of very vindictive people. There are a lot of people who are spies for other communities there are a lot of people who who try to join certain communities because they uh have some sort of like ulterior motive and i'm not trying to like overhype it and make it seem like all these activists are you know shitty people but i'm just saying that there's shitty people among us and i'm not trying to say that all things that make you shitty make you like irreversibly problematic and you need to like die in a pit of fire but i'm just saying you know you know now my third prediction for woke book my first one was that woke book will have its own tmz someone will start a platform that is based purely off of talking about what's going on in the activist community and you've seen this everywhere you know there are people who 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 report on uh beef within the fitness community there are people who report on beef uh, within the YouTube, you know, uh, clout community. Like, oh, like Jake Paul and all that shit. There are people who talk about beef within the makeup community, you know? So it's like these, these communities exist. And not only do they exist, but they're industries. That's why I think it's so uh, uh, lucrative. Because this is a type of content that we haven't seen in Wokebook that would actually be worth keeping up with, you know? Um, like I said, if it's done, if it's done right. Um, my second uh, uh, prediction is that Facebook will tighten the rules. There will be a lot more restrictions. People will start getting permabans. Um, and you're really going to just be left with some of just the big giants. You know, you're going to have a bunch of big giant pages like Tim Weiss or Sean King. Uh, and then you're just going to have a lot of small bottom feeder profiles that are running off of their personal pages. Just small pages that are trying to gain a following. But look, you're only going to max out at like 10,000. That's the truth, you know? And I think if you start a page, it's really hard. It's really, really hard. But if you know how to do it, you can grow fast. You can grow very, very fast. And if you need help, if anyone's interested, hey, hit me up. Let me know. I will teach you the fucking ropes. I will, te I will teach you how... Look, I am the Mr. Miyagi of this shit. I Like, that's the thing that, you know, as a copywriter and as a marketer, I think I have a really great advantage is that I'm on social media. So I am in my playground. I know what I'm doing. Um, so... If you want to know what you're doing, if you want to, if you want to be the voice of your community, hey, hey, listen to the podcast or hit me up. Okay, third prediction. I think that there will be more platforms, hopefully, that will take more, uh, uh, that will that'll utilize video, audio, and podcasting. I think that Wokebook in terms of... Um, I think we've, like, reached think piece overload, you know? Like, I remember when, like, 2014, 2013, people barely wrote about race. 
especially on Facebook, not a lot of people were like writing like big pieces. You know, people were writing like little hot takes and whatnot, but like not a lot of people were writing pieces. And that's the era that I came into. That's why I came in at the right time, at the right place. Um, and and so I would write these thing pieces, and I'd write these like whole long spiels and explaining all that stuff. But as I'm sure a lot of you have noticed, we've reached think piece overload. Like everybody has a little think piece about everything. And I think now we need a new medium or a new way to consume this information without just having to read everyone's like annoying, like, like there's so many think pieces that are just really bad. They're just stink pieces. And I think audio, audio podcasting, I think video is the way to go. I just hope that, uh, like I said, more creative people join the space. More creative people decide to uh, create content for the activist community on Facebook. And again, all this kind of relates to each other. So if you're interested, if you want to, and you know, I say this seriously, if you want to make money, if you want to make a career out of this, you can. It's, it's really hard. Like, it's really, really hard. It's really, 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 really hard. And I personally wouldn't suggest it. But if you think that you have the chops for it, if you think that you have, like, the, the mental fortitude to withstand, the, like, the mountain of abuse that is going to come your way if you want to get to the spot, hey, man. Definitely try it. Okay, and for the last... And final story. We're going to talk about someone who is actually from the community. Um, her name is Candace Mason. She is a longtime follower. And she's a really good friend. I've known her for, I don't know, like a couple years or something like that. Just the sweetest person. Just the sweetest, nicest person. You know? She's, she's never uh, in the middle of drama. She's not talking shit about people she's not posting receipts and doing all this stuff just just a very positive person who will like post like uplifting comments and like you know just just one of those just a good person and her her uh, uh medium of choice is dance and she likes to pole dance and She's really skilled at it. She is, you know, like, like that is her content. She, she posts videos of her dancing and she dances to different music. It's cool. It's really artistic. It's like if you watched, you know, like Cirque du Soleil, it's like you, you, can, you can tell like, damn, like, you know, that takes a lot of muscle. That takes a lot of like fucking core strength and shit to, to do that. A couple days ago... She was called into work. So she's a, she's a teacher. And she is a teacher for uh, West Hope County Middle School uh, in North Carolina. And she was going to start her job as a sixth grade teacher for English. Now, when she went into orientation, she was called into the principal's office. And they had on their screen her Facebook profile. And they were basically, like, they had her videos up. Because somebody on Facebook, somebody on Facebook sent that to the school. Now, I don't know if it's, you know, a parent who is investigating to see, like, oh, who's this teacher? Let me go look them up. I don't know if it's someone who is vindictive, but chances are it's the latter and that it might actually be somebody from the community. Which is a really big deal because as a lot of you, you know, as a lot of you know, um, a lot of the stuff that's going on um, in in woke book, like it's spreading outside of Facebook, you know, and it's 
it's going to start bleeding into into newspapers and you know like it's just um a lot of people are really petty and a lot of people are really vindictive and a lot of people are really evil and it's just really unfortunate because you know so they sent this video to the school and they suspended her uh, with pay but they suspended her and it's like you know she's she's a mother uh, she's a single mother uh, she's a widow uh, with two daughters and she has like a, she she has a master's in psychology she's a bachelor's in english um they overlooked all of that Oh, sorry, um, kind of messed up, or connection. Anyways, you know, she, she she's super qualified. She has all these credentials. She has a master's and a bachelor's. But they still thought that she was, like, some bad influence. And they dug up through this, like, handbook. And they're like, oh, well, you know, you need to be a good example for the kids outside of outside of school. But that's bullshit. It's like, what, so she can't have a life? So she she has to, like police her her private life on her private instagram which she kept private you know so it's it's just it's really unfair and the the principals were saying that you know uh she in one of the videos like she was dancing to an eminem song or, or whatever and and they said that the song choice was vulgar it's too vulgar you know well what are the kids gonna think which is such bullshit because here's what's really going to happen. Look, kids are not as gullible and as, they're not as unaware as you might think. If you remember when you were a kid, you wanted to know what's going on. You want to know the T. Ooh, what's this teacher doing? Oh my God, did you hear about this teacher? Oh, I saw this teacher uh, after school in the parking lot, you know, uh, uh, smoking weed or whatever. You know, like, like kids want to know what's going on with their teachers, right? People are going to find out about this, right? These kids are in sixth grade. People are going to find out, and what they're going to think is she got fired or she got dismissed because she's a, you know, she, she's a pole dancer. Therefore, pole dancing is bad. And, and, and you shouldn't be... Moms are going are gonna to read that to their kids. Oh, uh... Listen up, Janie. You see what happened? Don't do that because uh, you know if you do that, you're gonna lose your job, and it reinforces that sexism and misogyny. You know, it's like in the parents' attempt to explain what's going to happen, or like parents are gonna have to explain what happened, right? Or kids are gonna have to talk, or or or, or whatever, right? And the explanation is going to be that oh, like you know. Uh, what happened was logical because you're not supposed to do that. Oh, it's inappropriate to do that, you know? And it's really unfortunate because, you know, it's like when you're in sixth grade, like that is when, that is like a peak time when you're really sort of developing your sense of identity and your sense of sexuality and your sense of what is uh, permissible sexuality or, or, or whatever. And not to say like, not to try to talk about sexualizing children, obviously, obviously. But what I'm trying to say is that, kill, you know, when, when you're on the age, when you're hitting puberty, you're just exploring that part of yourselves, you know? And I think that as, as an adolescent, like as a teenager, you know, you're, you're receptive to what's going on in the world, you know? You're receptive to things that are going on in the media. And if you're confused about, you know, my changing body, watching Madonna or watching Nicki Minaj or watching whoever, like these people like shape and the, you know, uh, the conversations that we have about them shape how you feel about your own identity. You know, because if you are, say, for example, um, a woman who is who who has a figure like Nicki Minaj and the conversation in the media is, ooh, that's nasty because she's so slutty and she needs to cover up, blah, 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 blah. Or, oh, like, uh, 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 her, like, she, Nicki Minaj is so vulgar because her boobs are out or whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
And if you have a similar body, then you're impacted by that. Like you feel like it's a jab to yourself. So like I said, you know, their decision to fire or to, to, to suspend Candace for having videos of her pole dancing, it's, it's just going to make it worse for the kids. It is just going to make it worse for the kids. Um, let's go see what people are saying in the comment section. Annie Castillo, she is gaming the system, and I am not mad at her at all. Oh, I think you're talking about Omarosa. Cameron said... Cameron, by the way, is our moderator for a lag fam. So definitely join the community. He is our gaming... Well, one of the gaming mods. Really cool guy. Uh, he said, that is too dramatic. It would be a fast fireball to riches and then destruction. Yeah, so he's talking about like the TMZ of Wokebook. Totally agree. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. Chris Lorenzo said, isn't this the same guy who thought about jacking up the price of fast food to get poor people to eat healthier? So he's talking about Jamie, Jamie Oliver. Ah, I don't remember if it's the same guy. I don't remember. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I know it's probably a white guy. Probably a white guy who looks like Jamie Oliver. Let's just call him Jamie Oliver. <laughs> um, Nancy Valentine said uh, she did what she did. Uh, what the dead man did for her shouldn't be the focus. Oh, okay, yeah. So you're talking about Asia Argento. Um about her like talking about Anthony Bourdain and like bringing him up. Um, yeah, 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 I agree. You know, like I low key feel like, you know, she's like, oh, well, Anthony Bourdain's dead. So who cares if I like, you know, take some of the bones in my closet and put it in his empty one, you know? It kind of feels like that. But again, I don't want to definitively say because I don't know, I don't know. We have no idea. We need more information. Shay Jones Hard said, Lord, please, it is so messy, making me wonder if that man's death wasn't a suicide at all, maybe a murder cover-up. Oh, my God. I mean, like, shit. Is that possible? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, like, like I, I wouldn't... <sighs> I would be surprised, but I wouldn't be surprised. You know what I mean? Like, if, if we found out something really, like, something really happened, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. Let's see. Uh, Jaleesa McLean said, She's more crafty than anything. She kept receipts of her conversations and waited for the right time to pounce. She went into that job with a backup plan. Exactly. Exactly. She is the woman with the master plan. She, um, look, I'm telling you, Omarosa is going to go down in history. She is going to go down in history. I think, I think that she's even going to have a final blow. Like she's going to have a, a she, there's going to be the Enver tape. There's going to be videos. There's going to be, uh, there's going to be like a, 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 a tour. <laughs> there's going to be a tour. There's going to be a Disneyland attraction. <laughs> Omarosaville. <laughs> you can ride the receipt roller coaster. <laughs> Look. This Omarosa thing. It is going down. All right, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you for tuning into the Woke Food Podcast, Episode 8, Amorosa Asia Argento, in the future of Woke Book. Again, thank you all for joining me, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.